It's happening. It's in the news. But don't worry. That's why Jesus said, when you see all these things happening, look up. Put your hope on God. Amen? Hallelujah. Lift up your head. It's not time to be discouraged. It's not time to stop. But rather it's time to lift up your head. Be strong. Why? Because I'm coming. And everything that I've said to you will come to pass. Those are the first part only of the four things that is happening. But the next things, don't worry. What I what is in my heart is this. You know, God is wise. Come on, tell somebody, God is wise. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to push you. Hey. When the church in Jerusalem is not carrying out the great commission when the Lord said that you should go when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you should be a witness in Jerusalem. And Judea and Samaria and other most part of the world, but they enjoy Jerusalem. Do you know what God allowed? He allowed Paul to persecute the church or soul. And when persecution comes, I tell you, that's where the Christianity spread throughout the Gentile nation. Because according to Acts chapter 8, verses 4, verses 1 to 4, the people were persecuted, they were scattered everywhere. But verses 4 tells us that when they were scattered, they preached the word of God everywhere and the gospel, hallelujah, spread. Hallelujah. God knows what he's doing. Why? Now, the, what I can see is God, I'm not a prophet, but I, I would say, I believe the church of America today need some pushing. God used America to spread the gospel throughout the whole world. But what is happening in America today? You know, it, or I, don't, I don't need to elucidate about that. You know what's happening. They're removing your freedom. Everything about Christ. Why is this happening? Don't worry. God knows what he's doing. Amen. Amen. Huh. You need some pushing. To carry out the Great Commission. One thing I believe is this, no matter what the devil tried to do, Romans 8.28, always true, amen. For all things will work together for good to them that love God. Those who are called according to his purpose, God's purpose, brothers and sisters, that in these last days, there will be multitude, multitude in the ballot decision. God, from the very beginning, desired to have many children. That is his eternal plan accomplished in Christ. Ephesians chapter 3 verses 11. That's the main reason why Jesus came according to Hebrews chapter 2 verses 10. To bring many sons to glory. Romans chapter 8 verses 29 tells us that whom he predestined, he also called. And whom he called, he also justified. Amen. And whom he justified, he glorified. Why? Because he's a plan. Verses 29 tells us, brothers and sisters, he predestined us to be conformed in the image of his son so that Jesus Christ will be the firstborn among many brethren. He wants to have many children. Amen. He started it with Adam and he said in Genesis 1.28, Oh, God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. It's a year of increase and they can, that is your, your team today. But God, as He started it with Adam at the time, He said, Be fruitful and multiply. Although Adam and Eve have sinned, but God's plan is consistent. That's why, even after the first universal judgment during the time of Noah, but after the flood, Genesis 9 verses 1 tells us that God said, God bless now and his children and said, be fruitful and multiply. And in due course of time, God found a man, his name is Abraham, to, to make this plan a covenant, an everlasting covenant. In other words, covenant is a final irrevocable commitment. God's commitment to fulfill what he has planned, to help many children, to help many children as the son of the seizure as like the stars in heaven that's what he promised to Abraham amen. Amen. amen and it will be fulfilled he said in Genesis 22 verses 18 through your seed 
all nations will be blessed through your seed through your seed who is the seed galatians 5 16 or 3 16 the seed is not other than jesus christ to have many god for him to have many children these last days is through the seed through jesus christ and you are a part of jesus christ because we are the body of jesus christ he's the head we are the body jesus christ can only accomplish his plan in these last days through you and me Amen. 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 But as I look back, why is it that the church is not really moving forward? As they, because if we look at the first century church, in just five or in just one week, from the upper room to every room in Jerusalem, that is Acts chapter 5, verses 28 or 38. And from Acts chapter 5 up to Acts chapter 16, the reputation of the church is they have already turned their world upside down. And in just two years, from Acts chapter 16 to chapter 19, Apostle Paul said, uh, Luke said, that the gospel was preached throughout Asia. And before the end of the first century, literally the whole world was Christianized until the second century. But if we look at today, why the church, after more than a thousand of years, still half of the whole world have never been, have never heard the gospel yet. What's happening? I believe from the past something had happened to the church. It was prophesied in the Bible. Amen? According to Joel chapter 1 verse 4. The Lord allowed because you know the, the church went to dark ages. It was typically illustrated in Joel chapter one verses four. There are four armies that comes. The it was called the locust, and then the palmer worm, the canker worm, and the caterpillar that destroy the tree. But I don't want to dwell on that. But the Bible says, let me focus on this. Chapter two, Joel verse twenty-five. I will restore to you all the years that the locusts have eaten, the palmer world have eaten, the canker world, and the caterpillar has eaten. We are about to experience a great restoration in this last days. I don't care what you've been through, what has happened in your life, what the enemy has put in your heart or in your life, but God is in a process of restoring the church because it that what he said must be fulfilled. He's restoring the church today so that the church will experience the greatest manifestation of the power of God in order for us to bring about the greatest harvest of soul. Amen. 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 So if you look at Joel, Joel is, is only four or three chapters. But chapter one speaks about the downfall of Israel. But chapter two is about restoration. And chapter 3 is about going on. He's talking about multitude, multitude, and about your position. Brothers and sisters, your theme this year is a year of increase in daycare. But it won't happen unless there is a restoration portion in life. But in order for, I believe, that in order for us to fulfill the Word of God, the Great Commission in these last days, what had happened to David? in his prayer must happen to us also open your bible and psalms 51 verses 10 up to 13. psalms 51 verses my my focus of message today is about restoration for fruitfulness amen look at me god is in the business of restoration what problem do you have today? Don't worry. That is in the process of restoration. Psalms 51 verses 10 tells us, It is the cry of the heart of David when he said, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. 
Restore unto me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with your free or a uh, willing spirit. Then, verse 13, then I will teach transgressors your way and sinners will be converted unto you. Let me focus first in verse 13. Amen. I believe it's your desire to increase. It's your desire that this decade will be a great harvest. A decade of a great harvest. Amen. Amen. That's the desire of, a, of David. Because from, from the very beginning, it was God's plan, really. Amen. For people to come to him. But even David knows that in his heart. He wants to, to share God to the, to the sinners. So that those transgressors will repent and they will be converted. He has a desire. Amen? And I believe you and me has a desire also to fulfill the great commission. Who among you want to share the gospel? Who want to be fruitful? It, it is God's command. But like David, he has a desire, but he has some problem. That's why he said, then. In other words, the word then is a connected connective uh, word. Amen? In other words, something must happen to him before he can do. Verses 13. Verses 13, he said, Then I will teach transgressor your way, and sinners will be converted. That's the desire of our heart. But it will only come to reality when verses 10 and verse up to verse 12 happens to us also. David prayed for five major things so that he can do verses 13. Verses 13, let me repeat. He said, I will teach your ways to the transgressor and sinners will be converted to you. But before that, he said, then, then, in other words, I can only do these things, Lord, when you do these five things to me. Let me just simplify. Lord, I'm willing to be used by you. I'm willing to evangelize. I'm willing to teach your ways to the transgressor. And sinners will be converted to